The other thing that makes like the calf crusher look sick while the cattle mutilation can be quite difficult to work out is mm. you're leaving the guy his whole body to sell. Yeah. So that's like, true. if you put something on the knee, the guy selling it can sell it like fucking yep. openly. Mm. Whereas Openly. with the cattle mutilation, your head is buried underneath the guy. Yeah, you cannot see shit. Like, mm. Which is counterproductive for the showman side of wrestling, where you have to see your people's face to recognize, okay, that's supposed to be hurting them, or it's supposed to be this. Like, mm. No, like their face is buried. Like you're gonna you're not gonna see them like visibly like indicate that they give up. Or yeah. audibly say that they give up because you either can't hear it or you can't see it. Yeah, like that was always the like if you like I was kind of saying the logic breaker where for um for Decker's submission move in the in the RPG is like it is essentially a surfboard stretch, but you sit into it and then you you grab the wrist back. So logic breaker is once you lose wrist control, it's no longer submission. But it's also like if you're grabbing both wrists in that situation, like who how can you tap out? Like it has to be a verbal submission. So. In a, for a presentation point of view, you have to actually make it obvious that like they've, they've tapped out. So it is literally like either passed out or they verbally submitted. So the referee has to go, oh, flail, you know, kind of like, you know, do everything like that way. Um, so like it, it, it was always, it's it, especially if, you, if you're prepared, if you know how to, um, if you know how to sell that move and it also if you have the ref on board to actually show Rosie that, it, that it's a tap out, then it works that way, you know? Um, like what's the but the best way of the presentation is the guillotine, I suppose, isn't it? Like it is that when you arc back in that way, like that's like the your attention is drawn now to the referee and see what they're they're doing because you, like once they're in that kind of especially if it's a grapevine guillotine, you can't see the guy who's taking it. Like they're enveloped by like by whoever is, is doing it. So it's up to the referee now to actually to visually express if it's a submission or not, you know. This is his night to put Okay, what's going on here? What the fuck? What like, suddenly, are you a face now? It, these, these are super these tweener. Just, yeah, like these just happen. Like these are all just like randomly. Like it's it. Here's all the people that are involved in this mini feud, and just random cutscenes to fill the air while Michael Cole and JBL chat shit. No right now. I am now curious to see who would be filling the gap if you were playing as MVP or as Elms. Mm. Like, like, do they have set people for this for everyone type situation? I think the clue was earlier on when we were in a tag team match. I think the spare is actually Finley. Yeah. I think so. Because um, I think Regal like Regal is just kind of falling underneath the, the what, people who would be kind of qualified because I think even statistics, stats-wise... MVP Kennedy Helms like Helms is, is the same is 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 weaker than Regal but MVP and Kennedy are stronger so it kind of balances out that way the Helms is kind of the the, the stooge of the four Fair. you know is it the same so if you were playing this as Batista would you mm. be getting the exact same people in the exact same stories or would you be like up a tier that's a good question I actually don't know um I would reckon yes you probably would be getting some variations of this because i think it was the same with um with the sheldon benjamin storyline where like we were kind of jumping forward from like okay here's a world title storyline you lost so you're down this way so there is a kind of a logic like you're starting off here you go up or down up or down up or down sure. and then i think some some of the season modes naturally progress to you they basically some some of them just blue ball you until you're your world champion at wrestlemania and um, whereas when we were playing shut your mouth for example we got the world title exceedingly early and we were basically champion for, champion for a year until we like like we didn't naturally like relinquish the championship like we arguably go into the next one as champion you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so so in, in a way like, like i think the other ones kind of like result in an actual in a natural crescendo whereas yeah i think sometimes you have to actually start at the champion to get those kind of little extra stories but um, then just, we're not missing anything in a sense. You're probably getting actually a, a better ex experience by starting off in the mid card and working your way up. Yeah, you know, it at least changes somewhat. Then, as yeah, opposed to just think, here's our main eventers and now fight them for a year. Pretty much, yeah. Um, like I think, I think if you are if you are a champion, at least in this aspect, um, that is essentially what would happen to you. Really, you'd get a few 
recycle storylines and then hey here's 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 a legend story and here's a an invasion story and here's ECW and all this shit, you know? Does the game have the option to switch shows? He, it gave me a storyline reason to switch, yes. Okay. Because later on in this video. Hmm. Mm. Stay tuned. Yeah. But there's not, there isn't a, a natural thing to say, like, can I go to Raw now? There's, no, no, there is actually... You're given an in-game, uh, like, a, a narrative option to go, but it's up to you to pick it or not. And again, sure. it just means that, like, you cycle through the Raw storylines instead, you know? It's not like kind of 07 where you did you go like from like a full like from like what as it were like from WrestleMania from Mania to Mania where half a year you're on one side of the roster. Okay, there's all your storylines used up. Now let's go over to the other side. <laughs> yeah. become champion there, you know. So it's efficient as well, I guess. It's like yeah, we here yeah. So you get to use you know, see like ten of the twelve storylines we've written for the for the season, you know. Nothing wrong with that. Also, also recognizing that by and large people only play the season mode once with their favorite wrestler and then they just move on then. Yep. 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 Whereas the the one like fatal flaw or the the, the kind of flaw in the twenty four seven mode here is that your your the game designers are hoping you'd play it multiple times to, to you know to develop your wrestlers. Like you ain't gonna fucking do that. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's no. not happening. No. You know, you're gonna do what everyone else did and got an action replay and max out your stats. That's 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 the that's the right way to do this, you know. Yeah, so what's wrong with that? Oh, the total package and he knows it. Man, this one's turned into a fight. Pure uh, one thing that made me chuckle is uh, a, like about when, when I got a good bit into the game, I realized, and again, it wasn't too far away since I had played 07. So I noticed something quite unusual about the commentary in um, in this is that um, JBL is literally saying the exact same lines that Taz did the year before. Oh, weird. <laughs> beat for beat, word for word. He has just reread the reread the lines because now Taz is on ECW. And as I believe is correct, I think Joey Styles then replaces the Michael Cole lines for all the wrestlers they've had already, if you know what I mean. So like, so if it's a new wrestler on the roster, they've recorded new lines for each of them, if you know what I mean. Whereas if it's anyone that's already been on the roster beforehand, it's the exact same anecdotes every single time. And like, it is literally the case of like, okay, who's done the better line read? Taz or... <laughs> I do like the idea that they had this like full blown script and they were just like read. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I, I, I suppose, like, at this stage, like, you can kind of tell that, like, like they did they did find it hard to keep up to the yearly schedule. Like, it was easy enough to pitch them out and here comes the pain because they had a bit of a head start with, uh, with the game engine they had. And then just the technology got better, the PS2 had substantially more shelf life than anyone was expecting. And uh, and then the PS3 was just kind of coming around as this kind of big monolith that no one, no one understood. Because um, I even remember at the time that a lot of developers didn't never got the PS3 kit. They needed to develop games on it. So they were just adapting PS2 engines to work on it. Unless you were like, say, a Sony exclusive studio and you had free dibs to it. So, like, you know, whoever, I think, I can't remember who developed Heavenly Swords, but they had the test kit and... Same with like Naughty Dog, I think had uh, because they were Sony um, affiliated and Zomniac. so they were all able to just like immediately hit the ground running. But if you were like say a third party, because Ukes was essentially a THQ like offshoot at the time, they were so intrinsically linked, they were basically had to wait until like THQ basically bought the PS3 dev kit and they never really did. That uh, also is why like PlayStation had an exceptionally low game library mm. like yes that's why they focused more on bringing now now we'll give it some it was kind of more like they focused on quality over quantity yeah. whereas like xbox was just shit now fucking games left right and center that's why yeah. they kind of won that fucking battle yeah to, to a certain extent i think like i, I think the ps3 does kind of 
come go that in a what in, in the end but that's yes. because like they they pulled they hauled ass essentially and um, and and then like, after, after a while then people just kind of stop bothering with the version exclusives but it is interesting to see when like even stuff like that happens even nowadays because what i mentioned there that happened with the nintendo switch so like there was very little unless you were not a unless you were a nintendo studio and you had the dev kit yourself if you were a third party you, you ain't getting fucking nothing on the switch you're gonna wait until everyone else gets it essentially and it was the reason why platinum games made bayonetta a switch exclusive or an or a, yeah a switch exclusive because they got like the nintendo basically funded them for bayonetta 2 so they end up being on the wii u of all fucking things and then suddenly bayonetta 3 comes out and it's on the switch it's like yeah same difference like they're they're paying our way like um, we can't say no to them to, to basically having a shortcut to to having all the Nintendo tools, you know. But certainly, like at least from the from the SmackDown vs Raw aspect of it, like like they were expecting them to turn out this game every year, evolve the gameplay to a certain degree, but also try and keep up with all these really good game modes at the time. Like GM mode was great when you were playing it. It really was like uh the shit back then and but also you also wanted the the story modes to have new storylines and all your new wrestlers to come out when realistically they were a year behind each time you know <laughs> i want you know like having the addition of ecw superstars probably set them back six months because you realize oh shit now we have to program these fellas in fuck okay you know <laughs> Fucking hell, the speed of spin. Holy shit. He's been wrestling his style of match and he's coming up on a big payoff. Yeah, I was trying to get to, um, I was trying to start working towards an airplane spin power to punch combo. Where basically like you do a massive airplane spin, get your momentum up, and then clock him with brass knuckles. <laughs> so comical and violent at the same time. Which I think is Are very William. Dizzy? Oh, I'm gonna make you fucking dizzy now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Either way, you're seeing fucking stars. Say that these superstars didn't give it everything they got. I love hearing a crowd come alive, even if I disagree with what they're saying. Me too, and I do agree with what they're saying. Mr. Kenny there with a headache, presumably because he's listening to himself. This is also an interesting game in that this was the one where they were well past the halfway point of the development process and they had to suddenly scrape people from the game. Yeah. On any kind of voice acting that was done. or Apparently, he was also going to be one of the cover stars. Mm, I believe so, yeah. He was going to be the ECW representative. Lashley mm. ended up being slotted in instead. Yeah. Which, of course, like, was true, considering, like, he was meant to be the easy to be guy on that night. And, uh, yeah, that didn't fucking happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Take that down, you prick. Yes, the dream team of MVP and William Regal, together at last. The streets do not forget. MVP, MVP continuing his trend of being an all right guy. <laughs> I, I I can get behind MV, nice guy MVP, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, totally unironic uh, nice guy MVP. Good shit. Hmm. To be fair, that should be his role now. Just anywhere there's like grievous injustice, MVP shows up with Omos to write things. He goes out for every redacted wrestler on the indies. Yeah, just randomly shows up and crushes him. <laughs> What's that? MVP is getting booked in Puerto Rico? Why is that? Um, don't worry about it. No, seriously. Don't ask questions. You sure he's going to come back? Yeah. Might have getting some like accent in the, in the shower. <laughs> We just start getting like grainy CCTV footage from like random hotels where like MVP and Amos walk up and knock on the door and you see Chris Jericho open the door in a towel. Suddenly he looks <laughs> terrified. Great. You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> You're not who I invited. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I got the real wrong call on that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and after a passionate night with Omos, Jericho might improve his behavior. Who knows? <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm not going to say it was a riot, guys, but man, the smell of January 6th in here, man, it was something else. <laughs> oh, dear. I know we shouldn't laugh, but, like, his wife is a genuine fucking nutbag. Oh, like, God, yeah. Like, jeez, if you think Chris Jericho is bad, just look at her fucking social media. She is genuinely a bot. But the worst thing is, she actually isn't. She's a real person. She actually believes these things. Like, fuck, fuck Kane in the CT scan. Get her scanned instead. Yeah. Like, Jesus, At least like... he took chair shots. Yeah. What did you drink? What... Drinking fucking formaldehyde? I don't know. Like, I probably would want to be married, be married to Chris Jericho, but Jesus Christ, like. <laughs> I do have Chris Jericho has a kid, doesn't he? We're right saying like he has two kids, does he? Yeah. yeah. Does he? I think he has two or three. Poor bastards. Like, your yeah. dad's Chris Jericho, and your wife is a Trump supporter. They are doomed. Yeah, there's not a lot of hope there. No. Fucking hell. <laughs> Durability exercise. Punch Kane and survive. <laughs> That's what also makes me chuckle. That's what that's what gets me through these like little bits in between is like seeing what seeing what William Regal's doing on his day off. He's like, oh yeah, he's uh he's in a like villain movie where he's holding a sword. Then he's uh, like lifting the Undertaker up for five minutes. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, the, the the pre PC performance center is uh, an interesting place. <laughs> I believe it was called FCW. <laughs> Run by men called Death the Roads, baby. Just a bunch of people walking around, heavier people. It'd be <laughs> great. <laughs> like I wouldn't mind, like when he said, like when when they do say like like strength and like stuff, whatever the kind of exercises are. I'm kind of like a head cannon is that like that's who he that's who he's working on a house show with. Like he was having a match with like like Kane or Mark Henry or whatever. It's like. Oh yeah, is it no? I said, what are you doing on this? Uh, what are we doing on this match? Oh, I'm focusing on my durability, Mister Henry. How about yourself? Oh, I'm thinking of doing a bit of a submission game myself. Oh, very mm. nice. Mm, well, very good. Yeah, I'm not going to either. Yeah, same. I'm not arsed. <laughs> but Regal is absolutely doing the loop with Kennedy. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> now we now we're giving the people what they want to see: a William Regal thirst trap. He's a man. Such a man. Such a man. He's a real. Okay, we go. Ah, too funk. Ah, funker. What a crazy bastard. Mm. Forever. Forever. The chance to switch opponents earlier this week, and he turned it down. I hope he's not dumb enough to think that his schedule opponent's going to be some kind of pushover. <laughs> William Regal, dumb. When does that ever happen? The only dumb, dumb thing he ever did in his life was tagging with Eugene. Not even remotely joking when I was about that one, by the way. Here <laughs> Here's a question for you, actually, while we're having to fucking wrestle with Mr. Candy again. Is William Regal the most versatile performer WWE has ever had? If we think about it, right? Because, again, let's, if, we're, if we're working with, like, kind of like the, the subsets of wrestlers you have, technically solid, submission wrestler, Good brawler, good character, has worked face and has worked heel, and has done comedy. How many other wrestlers have kind of ticked all five of those boxes outside of William Regal? Like, you'd probably say maybe he hasn't done high-flying stuff, you'd argue. 
Mm. In terms of all those kind of little archetypes of like who you kind of need on a roster, you can kind of slot in everywhere, really, can't he? The only person I can think of offhand who's as versatile in like even that like when they were injured they could be slotted in as a authority figure because they're so fucking charismatic. Mm. The only person I can think of who was as versatile is Kurt Angle. Yes, actually, Kurt Angle could certainly feel that like that kind of fills that bracket quite well too. Yeah, mm. but like that's that's some fucking privileged company to be in, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose no, to, a to a degree as well, in a modern era, Daniel Bryan. Very true. And he like, did the comedy, he did the hard hit and technical. He could slot in as an authority figure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he can, and he can be violent when he needs to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And let's be fair, like, if, if they were to be believed, um, like, it's like Brian is almost like he's the actual lunatic running the asylum at this stage. Oh, yeah, I, I choose to believe he's another one of these people who was not always like this. No. <laughs> I love that move, I don't know why. I expect that move is a disgustingly horrible move to take. Yeah. Um, like rope for the carpet burn. Yeah. Right? Like that's that's not fun. Because you no. have to hope that not only can you get the slide, yeah, but also you also have to be able to like commit and just plant yourself. Like yeah, yeah. Because if you don't get enough of a slide to to clear it, your feet are gonna get caught yeah. and you're gonna face. Yeah, you want the momentum to make sure that your feet clear the apron, but also, yeah. My God, the burn! Like, like the landing Mysterio. is the least, not the least pleasant part. Mm. Mysterio only started doing that though when he started wearing like yeah. this English up top. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. He had slidable like material essentially. It made it easier. Or you know, bearable. Yeah. So, shockingly, my airplane spin punch gim uh, combo did not work. So far, but I think it's which way it's going. There does seem to be more of an effort going into the games at this point to make it more of a coherent wrestling match, though. As yeah. opposed to just an arcade Keep dropping him on his head, it'll be grand. Yeah, well, like, one thing that doesn't come across while watching the playthrough is how s much slower everyone moves. Mm. Like um, like especially the the few games before that everyone's quite flighty, like they they glide, they kind of glide across the ring. Whereas like there's a very pronounced stride in how you're walking as a as a wrestler. Now again, it could be just because of wrestling as regal and he has a certain movement speed. But I think everyone's practically the same in that regard. Um, very fair. Already certainly there's the kind of uh, slight variations on it, you know, but. Certainly, it means also then like the gameplay is ever that's is, is ever so slightly slower and easier to control. So you notice there like the like the tag team matches are a lot more um, sensible. Like it's not just like a free for all like normal. And many of the multi man matches are the same. You know, you're not having to uh, to control so many moving parts if everyone generally is moving a bit slower. You know, I think. Um, to certain degrees, I think certain games, especially the, the the first few 2K games, they're like turgid compared to their their the, how um how everyone moves in this game. Like they are like fucking boats turning around the place. But they were they were trying to harness a certain energy. They're trying to make it feel like it's a it's a wrestling match, you know. And yeah. you have like chain mini games and stuff like that, which I didn't dislike. I'll be honest. You know, it depends on what you want in a in a wrestling game, I suppose. Exactly what we're seeing. So, I'm right saying, was it? It was Eddie Guerrero that had the Dragon Sleeper in our playthrough, Foxy. That yeah. we kind of use, yeah. So, kind of a uh, small world syndrome here is like yeah, the exact same move working for Will William Regal now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Full circle, lads. I like Full it. Full circle. Yeah. And like, I'm not gonna lie, he, he's kind of doing it better than Eddie did because like he's just like. Or, like he is twisting that neck back, like, and the, and the arm is over the face as well, so it's even doubly, uh, doubly fucking uh, vicious. It does figure that Regal would have the the crisp execution on it though. Mm. 
it does work. Mm. It's a very underrated submission. Like it, I, I'd love to see someone like do like do it again because it is it is genuinely quite effective. You know, like I I look at how how Regal has worked in this playthrough and was like this is what Pete Dunne should be. You know what I mean? And like he is essentially like he will end up becoming that type of wrestler. Right you know. Back. Of course, of course, I like like Pete has the luxury of being like very acrobatic as well if he wants to. But yeah. in terms of the move set, this is the stuff that he can do. 